This is Eagle Al, and today I'll be talking about Jalen Hurts. It was not the leadership that was the problem. It was something else. Also, Sidney Brown is close to 100%. And lastly, is Jalen Carter generational? But let's get straight into it. All right, man. So let's start with Jalen Carter. Yes, Darius Slay Moore, that podcast with him and Chris Long. It was phenomenal. I really urge you guys to watch it. And he talked about Jalen Carter and how Jalen Carter is just generational. And Chris Long wanted to how he would love to play with Jalen Carter. But let me play this clip. Can be special with the capital mm-hmm. S. And yes. when I watch him, he's a guy that makes me want to put my pads on, join the team again, so I can be like, hey, motherfucker, you could be the best ever. You know, you're you're that good. You could be you could be one of these guys they talk about like the best Eagle D lineman of all time. He's that talented. Yeah, he's very good. What does it have to to be for him to take that next step as a leader? Because you got Fletch leaving, you got some guys at Kelsey. You know, you need some of these young guys to to step up a little bit. Do you see that intensity from him this offseason? Yeah, yeah, man. He he approaching it in a different manner. You know, uh, he's a guy that gets going too. So him and Chauncey, they're about the same. They gets it going. They go give you a mouthful and go and go back it up. So, uh, man, he's he's a different beast, you know. Uh, with Fletch, you could just he he said the same thing as in like, hey man, this kid could be very very special, man. If he just if he just like lock in and just do this and do that and do whatever, you know. Because I'm not in their room every day, but when he out there in practice, he's going. We in the game, he's going. Nobody's blocking him. I mean, he made some rushes. There was a rush in the Seattle game that was. I mean, it's just the guys winning that quick are only the best in the league. And uh, the attention that people pay to him already. Um. As you see, right, these dudes hyped up about Jalen Carter. I think year two is going to be different. I think it's going to be different. Now, see, generational, I believe he would teeter with it because it's only like one guy, I believe, that was like really generational or two, you can say. It was Reggie. I mean, not Reggie White. It was Jerome Brown as a defensive tackle and then Aaron Donald. Now, can Jalen Carter be that next guy? Maybe, maybe, because even Fletcher Cox was like, yo, if we do this, do that, I'm telling you, the dude is nice. And we had some really good defensive tackles in the NFL. But to say he's generational, we will see. I don't really like to throw generational around because you get those once in a while or once in a lifetime. Like when you think of the wide receivers, I think of Megatron as generational and like Randy Moss or even a Jerry Rice. And when you think of defensive tackles, it's Jerome Brown and Aaron Donald, right? But then you had some really good ones like the Nick Sues, like the Fletcher Cox of the world. So it's always been really good defensive tackles, especially in Philadelphia. But we see Jalen Carter generational. I mean, six sacks your first year, and he looked good. He imploded when Coach Pencil. I don't like Coach Pencil, bro. When Coach Pencil came in, the whole defense just got worse. And he had the easier part of the schedule. I would never let that go. I hate that Patricia dude, man. I really do. The team just imploded, man. It really did. But Jalen Carter, I think he's going to be hungry. And I think he's going to take that leadership role we want him to take. So, yeah, man, Jalen Carter. We'll see if he's generational, man. We'll see. All right, so let's talk about Jalen Hurts. Yes, Jalen Hurts. Uh, Ruben Frank talked about J- Ruben Frank here, and I'm going to go over the quote, and this is what he said. The problem wasn't leadership. It was turnovers. If Hurst didn't commit six turnovers in the Eagles' last five games, they probably would have gone 13-4 and four and won the division, and we wouldn't be having these conversations. Well, I believe the conversation would have still been going on because I think even if we had the first seed, had a bye, the way the team was playing, we we probably would have lost anyway with the bye, but 13 to 4 would have been great having that bye game. And we would have seen like more preparation, but the play caller was terrible. But I do agree. I don't think it's the leadership this and that. Cause even people saying like we're gonna miss Jason Kelsey for his leadership. I'm on the side of we just gonna miss Jason Kelsey for his play. I mean his leadership was a booster, but his play will be missed more than anything. But I think it was turnovers, you know. Look at the numbers from 2022 to 2023. The only thing that was really the uptick was the turnovers. Everything else was damn near the same, but it was just the turnovers. Now, if we cut that down, 
we'll be fine. Was some turnovers his fault? No. Like, it was one play he threw it to Swift, and I guess Swift ran the wrong route, or was the wrong read, and Devin White, who was now an eagle, was just sitting there. So it was just stuff like that that happened. Bad drops turned into interceptions. So, you know, like, the, the turnovers were a bit dang in Philadelphia. Now, if we can lower that, and you could get 13 wins out of this team, or even possibly even 14, I, I, I'm good with that. I'm definitely good with that. So I don't think it's the leadership thing. I think we've blown it out of proportion because of the you know press conference with Jalen Hurts when we talked about Nick Sirianni. I think we're blowing that leadership thing out of proportion. To me, with the Eagles right now, it's coming to X's and O's. Can Barkley be the guy? Can Jalen Hurts turn it down with the turnovers? Can A.J. Brown, you know, take it to another notch? Can uh, Devontae Smith take it to another notch? Will Dallas Goddard be healthy the whole year? It's stuff like that. Leadership, again, is a booster to me. But it comes down to the X's and O's. Is Kellen Moore ready? Kellen Moore ready to basically just take over the whole offense. You don't have to worry about bumping heads with a guy. Because remember, in Dallas, <clears throat> he started bumping heads with Mike McCarthy. And the charges was just an accident waiting to happen. And then a lot of people got injured. But now he's coming into a team that's healthy with a lot of playmakers. Let's see what Kellen Moore can do. So it, it really comes down to the X's and O's. And again, people just blowing up the leadership, leadership, leadership thing, man. So I can't wait to see Jalen Hurts play. And Jalen Hurts is going to prove a lot of people wrong. A lot of people wrong. The doubters in our conference, the doubter, doubters in Bit Media, because now Bit Media, according to uh, Nick Wright, saying he might be like a bottom 15 quarterback, which is insane to me, which is crazy to me. But hey, that's that's his opinion. I believe he's wrong. And Jalen Hurst, again, just offense in general is going to prove a lot of people wrong. A lot of people wrong. But let's talk about my guy, Sidney Brown. Yes, Sidney Brown talked to the media uh, during the baseball celebrity game. He talked to Ed Carras and he asked him about, you know, his health, how close he is to 100 percent. And this is what Sidney Brown had to say. He said, I'm back to moving full speed. That is really good. I'm running about 22 miles per hour again, slowly climbing up there. I'm still working on a lateral movement but I'll be as close to 100% as I can be to start the season, and we'll see what happens with that. So we're talking about a guy that was projected to probably come back in, what, October, November, who will be ready in September, man, oh, man, and running full speed? Because I was worried. When I seen Sidney Brown at the celebrity softball game, I'm like, well, I mean, my guy supposed to be healing up, but it sounds like he's... If I had to rank, he's probably like 75% right now. He's probably like 75% right now. I think he's going to sit out most of the training camp. And if he do, he's going to be limited a lot if he practice. I don't think he's going to do any full on practice, not any contact for sure. But I think Sidney Brown, man, he wanted to come back because his name is slowly drifting away. A lot of people are talking about CJ Garner Johnson and Reed Blankenship, as you should. And a lot of people saying, like, Cooper DeGene, can he be that safety? I'm like, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. We got a guy named Sidney Brown who played phenomenal his rookie year, and we just count him out like that. Now, the reason why I say we need another safety because I'm not sure when the Eagles will be ready to play Sidney Brown. And I'm like, well, we do need that backup because basically after what, Reed Blankenship, and CJ Garner Johnson, who's really there. You got Makai Gardner. You got Andre Sam from LSU. Uh, maybe you can get Cooper DeGene some reps, but we're talking about a guy that had like one or two snaps in college. So is he ready for that? Or are they just going to have him moving around more on the outside and slot corner? We will see. But for us, the depth of the safety room is really small without Sidney Brown. Now, if we bring back Sidney Brown or Sidney Brown comes back, then the safety talk can slow down just a little bit, just a little bit. So Sidney Brown's like, don't count me out. He's working. He's working to get back as soon as possible. And it will be interesting how 
Big Fangio used Sidney Brown. Because Sidney Brown, even though he had a, a decent rookie year, I don't think he got a chance to really show his skills because we were so thin. Remember those days? We were so thin that cornerback. We had to slot Sidney Brown as a slot corner. He had to learn that position because we were so thin because of the injuries. And sometimes he did get toasted, but he's not a slot corner. He's a safety. But when we seen him at sale, it was more at that safety position. So we would see what he do. We would definitely see what he do, how fast he could get back. And I can't wait to see Sidney Brown back. But hey, man, what do you think? How do you feel about the news today? Sidney Brown, Jalen Carter, Jalen Hurts. But this is Eagle Owl, man. I'm up.